I'm Scott Allen Miller. It is the 31st of March, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today, my topic is the travel barrier. What is it? How does it affect you? How should you treat it? More after the bump. Happy Friday, everybody. Before I get into today's topic, just real quickly, what we did this evening, I worked all day, and then this evening, a bunch of us went out to uh, Via Via to see a live concert. Sakasa was playing tonight. I've never seen Sakasa play before. Very, very famous in Managua. Everyone that we were with last night at the party is like, oh, no, tomorrow we're going to Via Via. Sakasa's playing, you have to be there. We're like, oh, oh okay. So we went, oh, what a fantastic concert. <laughs> My gosh, we had a good time. They were amazing. I will, I will travel to see them play other places. They were really, really fantastic. What Put on a good show, the music was great. The place was absolutely packed. I mean, crazy packed. And I, I need to talk more about this, but going out and doing live music is such the Nicaraguan experience. That and dancing, that is what you do when you live in Nicaragua, and this was really great night out for that and uh, so we had a really good time really glad we went and then we went dancing for a little bit at 23 bar after that but it was so wildly packed that uh, we didn't stay too long that was exhausting so what is the travel barrier that is today's topic and this i think a lot of people feel this but people don't really articulate it very much and i hope the wind is not too bad again we're in the windy season i can't help it when you have never traveled there is this in this Im mental barrier that everyone has, that or almost everyone has, that it is scary to go get on the plane for the first time, or to hop in the car and just drive, or just go to a new place. And this, to some degree, is true with a new city, to some degree, it's true with a new state, but it really, when you have a new uh, country or a new region of the world, it becomes very, not necessarily scary, but there is a barrier to going. It feels hard. And I remember having this feeling, I always wanted to travel, I was not gonna let it stop me, but the feeling of going to, say, England, 
was so like, oh, it's such a big jump. It's such a big thing to go to England. Do you have to prepare? Do you have to schedule? Do you have to, you have to do all these things? And then when you actually go, well, the flight's easy. Packing the luggage is a little bit hard for me, but other than that, that's what Dominica does that. I can't, I can't pack for anything. And, and, and suddenly you're like, oh, other than sitting on a plane for a few hours, that's not scary. That's not stressful. That's not anything. It's just, oh, you sit in a plane and suddenly you're in London. Is London hard? No, London is not hard. Is getting a train from there hard? No, that was easy. Is getting to the hotel hard? No, that was easy. Every little thing is easy. Is there stuff to do? Yes. Is it fun? Yes. Is, am I glad I went? Well, should I be nervous? No. And the next time you go, it's so easy. Once you've been to England, and I'm just picking England at random, then the next time when someone says, oh, you were to England last year, do you wanna go this year? You might be like, no, I've already been. But beyond that, you're not gonna have like, a, oh no, I'm kind of worried about going, it's so stressful. No, you're gonna be like, oh yeah, it's so easy, let's just go, right? If someone was paying for your trip, you wouldn't think twice, you just go to the airport, right? We're going tomorrow, I'm paying, all right, let's go, right? Zero apprehension, zero barrier, zero panic. It gets so easy. We did this in 2007. Dominica and I went to England and it was our first time traveling outside the US and Canada. Canada, we both grew up with being so close that it never felt like going international at all. Sorry, Canada, but it's like the little America. It just is. And so going to England was the first real hop and, and it felt not scary, but it was like, wow, there's so much we don't know. We, we had no idea what to expect as we went. And then once we got there, once you're there for about an hour, you're like, oh, no, this is, this is so nothing. Like, what is so easy? Why would we ever have hesitated at coming? Why would we have ever pictured it as hard? It's not hard. It's not anything. It's so easy. And then two years later, uh, I had to, this was another jump. I had to go to continental Europe, to Germany alone for a number of reasons. I'll tell the story sometime. And in doing so, it was like, okay, I've never traveled internationally alone. I've never been to the continent. I've never traveled to a country that doesn't speak English. I've been to Quebec, but you know, a lot of people in Quebec speak English and you're in a country that officially speaks English at least half and half. And, and they're, they're, they're used to people who speak English driving in and you can always just drive through the French zone and then you're into Ontario or then you're into Maine or whatever. And, uh, and, and so it's not the same, but going to Germany, I, I flew to the Netherlands with no plan. And, and it was, was it scary a little bit? Well, I went to Ireland first. That wasn't scary. Uh, just the plane hopped through. And then I went to the Netherlands and then I just got a train and I went to Germany and I figured it out and I was alone. And so there was this traveling alone panic and there was a going to a country that doesn't speak English panic. And there was, or more importantly, a language I don't speak panic and uh, a going to the continental Europe, not just the UK panic. And none of it was panic. I, I, I use that, but it's all this mental barrier that makes it difficult to, to just be able to just go. It, it, it makes you stop and think. And once I actually went to Germany and did it, it was all so easy and all so comfortable and so fun, right? That now I would go to anywhere in Europe without thinking twice. I would go alone without thinking twice. None of it is particularly an issue at all. And I still find that these barriers exist for me. When I first came to Latin America, it was another barrier. Ooh, I don't know about going to Panama. Like I wasn't scared of it again, but there's this barrier, like it feels hard. You don't just think of it as around the corner. And once you've done it, you realize, especially if you live in America, that like Panama is so easy to get to, you think nothing of it. Would I go for a weekend? Sure, I would just hop a plane and go for the weekend. It's so easy. And then the same thing with Nicaragua. Once we come here, it's like, wow, when you haven't been to Nicaragua, and this, this is kind of what hits me, is when I'm talking to people about coming to Nicaragua, talking to friends, talking to family, and it's like, you know, you could come down to Nicaragua. And it's so hard for them to, to decide to do it. It takes so long and they're like, well, you gotta figure out the plane and you gotta ask all these questions. There's all this stuff you have to know. No, there isn't. What do you need to know? You need to know how to book a plane. That's it, go get a flight. I've seen them for $141, just go do it. That's it, figure the rest out here. Throw some stuff in, the, in, in, a, in a bag right in your luggage just come down and and they're always like but it's it feels so far and it feels so foreign i mean that's part of the point to go somewhere foreign but it feels like it's so much and once you do it you're like wait that's it it's a two and a half hour flight it's like driving around the city running some errands and suddenly you're there and everything is cheap and everything is easy and everything is safe and it's just now i'm in paradise and i can go do sightseeing and i can go do whatever like it's so easy once you do it and the once they've done it right 
like Cat. Cat, the first time, it's like, oh, well, there's all these logistics, all these things. I'm, I'm nervous about going to Nicaragua. Again, not nervous, but it's just there's this mental barrier. Once she's here, it's like, oh, I could just come and go anytime I want. It's so easy to get there. It's so easy to be there. It's so easy to make the decision and do all that stuff. That is important, and we get it everywhere. And this comes up because Dominica is about to go to Asia for the first time, and she's going through it, I can tell, with all this, all this, all this planning you got to do, and all this thinking, and it's all stressed out. It's a month away, and you're going to Thailand and Vietnam. Like, these are vacation places, right? Like, really easy to deal with. with millions and millions of people, hundreds of millions of people, and, and lots of tourists go there, and lots of backpackers, and people who do it with no planning. People who just get on a plane drunk and aren't even sure where they're going are there all the time, and they do just fine, right? It isn't hard. There doesn't need to be this mental barrier of, oh, I'm nervous about going to Southeast Asia or wherever, right? And for me, the same thing. I'm looking at going to South America. Uh, April and I are planning on going in September, it looks like, uh, with Alan and Anna. We're doing work in Bolivia, and then we're heading. This is, this is the big thing we're hoping to do for the channel. I'm hoping to bring you guys along. I'm hoping to have new cameras and all kinds of stuff doing, uh, like, hardcore touring Bolivia and then heading down and doing a bunch of Argentina that people don't see as much, uh, Salta, and, which like almost no one sees, and then Mendoza. A lot of people do Mendoza, but not anything like Buenos Aires. So we're doing uh, Salta and Mendoza, and then heading over, and then doing, hopefully, a whole lot of Chile. Uh, that is that is the goal. So we're hoping to show a whole bunch of that really big adventure. And for me, South America is another continent. It's, it feels like a world away. It feels like a big deal to go down there. But the reality is, is that our local flights out of San Jose to South America are $50. It's close. I have lived in Panama, which is just a hundred miles, maybe 200 miles from the border of South America. And it's so close that it's actually a South American cultural country, even though it doesn't sit in official South America. Like it is so nothing to go to South America. It is so close, so easy. It speaks the same language that I speak, Spanish, and it is culturally connected. It is, you know, I've lived in places that were part, like Panama used to be part of Colombia. So it's like if the United States broke up and you lived in New York for a while and were like, well, I need to go to California. You wouldn't be like, oh, it's a different world. No, they, do, they used to be the same country. Maybe they're not now, but you know, they were. It's not like a big deal to go from one to the other. People do it every minute. So, you know, in my mind, I have this barrier, this ah, oh, but I know the instant I have set foot in South America, it's going to unlock this barrier to me and I'm gonna be like, it is so easy and accessible to go to South America anytime I wanna go. And it's going to be, oh wait, Ecuador's only another hour away. Peru's only two more hours away. You know, Colombia, all those, there's a lot of countries that are really close and accessible and very tourist friendly, meaning they have infrastructure and things to do and it's really designed for tourists to go there. I got, something is going on here. This car just stopped in the highway and all these cyclists are trying to figure out what to do. He pulled over now, but he just stopped in the highway and they're waving to me. Okay, I think it's me that they wanna come talk to. We're gonna, we're gonna go see what's going on. Adventures. Hey, man. Hey, hey. How you doing? <laughs> How you doing? Good, good, good. You're on the show today. Oh, well, hey, hi. <laughs> uh, are you going to- I will be back. I recorded an entire ending to this video and my GoPro 11 recorded it with no audio, literally none at all. It's the first time I've had that particular error. So I'm finishing up on the nine to make sure I'm able to finish the video. I'm gonna go back and play with the 11 later and see if the firm, so if it may have just been a glitch, which happens, uh, but the firmware update for this just came out. I updated it today. It failed the first like half dozen times that I tried the update a few days ago. Today it worked. So I'm hoping that the new update will work a little bit better so many camera problems recently. It's really, I'm, I'm putting in so much time trying to make this channel uh, with these extra extra problems. It's, it's becoming very challenging. Anyway, I really hope that, uh, so I'm sorry I had to cut off there. My friend Arhes showed up and gave me a ride home and I have to follow up with this a few days later, especially many days later because I lost my entire recording. But I really hope that this travel barrier is something that um, you can understand. Like once you realize that the travel barrier is there, once you understand how it affects you, you can start to see past it. For example, I want to travel to South America coming up pretty soon. I want to picture that I know, 
I can visualize that once I go, it is going to be so easy to go to South America again. The next time is going to be nothing, no effort at all. I will think nothing of getting on a plane and going. I will have no fear of going. I have no fear now, but I have this apprehension to like, oh, there's got to be something I don't know. There's going to be something complicated, but I know there's not. I know I'm going to show up and it's going to be just as easy or basically as easy as coming to Nicaragua or going to Panama. I'm going to be able to speak the language. I'm going to be able to find my way around. I'm going to be able to get a cab and go wherever I need to go. I'm going to be able to get great food that I love. I'm going to have a great time exploring. None of it in any way is bad, but it's, it feels so hard to get to. But once you go through that travel barrier, and I know once I go to South America, it's going to just open South America. And my mentality is going to be that South America is just a couple hours away and I can go really easily and I can just explore anytime I want. And I should just get on a plane and go. And I'll start going more often because I can. And that's what happened with Europe with us. In 2007, it was like, ah, oh, England is so hard. In 2009, ah, oh, continental Europe is so hard. After that, every trip was just whatever, just get on a plane and go. We would go anywhere, stay for any amount of time, do anything, didn't bother us at all. Getting past that travel barrier opens the world to you. If you can, fight it. Recognize that it's a logical picture. Yourself going through the barrier and being just it's easy to go anywhere. Just go and enjoy. Don't worry about it. That's the travel barrier. We all face it as far as I know. I don't know anyone who doesn't, but how we handle it and learning that it's something that you just perceive. If you're a first time traveler, it is really pronounced. Later, if you've traveled lots of places like me, okay, I know I have a little bit of, but I still sense it. When I'm looking at South America, I'm like, wow, I feel that travel barrier. It feels far away. It feels like I'm discovering a new place. The reality is I'm only going 200 miles farther than where I've gone before. I'm going to a country that is part of the same country I used to live in. Like it's crazy how not exotic that is, yet it feels like it must be. So I'm looking forward to breaking through another barrier and exploring more of the world. I hope you get through your barriers and explore more of the world. And the takeaway is if you're looking at coming to Nicaragua or you're looking at moving somewhere else, if you're looking at traveling, just do it. Take all those feelings that make it difficult to go. All, maybe not the money, but all the other ones, right? Once you finance that, when you're like, ah, oh, but it might be hard. No, it's not. It might be scary. No, it's not. Make yourself say, you know what? That's just my emotions talking. It's going to be fun. It's going to be easy. It's going to be a great experience. I'm going to be absolutely thrilled that I went. Everyone always is. It doesn't matter where you're traveling, right? Europe, Southeast Asia, South Africa, it doesn't matter. Everyone comes back and goes, that was a great experience. It'll be a great experience for you too. Make it happen. Don't let the travel barrier hold you back. For most people, it doesn't actually stop them, but it does slow them down. It means that trip you might take next weekend, you wait a year to take, or maybe you spend five years planning instead of just hopping a plane. Don't let the barrier slow you down. Don't let it hold you back. Get out there, see the world. Thanks for joining me. Remember to like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. I really appreciate it. It goes a really long way. Helps me fix some of these camera problems that have been plaguing us so much recently. And uh, as always, share on social media. Tell your friends. Get down in the comments. Let me know about your travel barrier fears. What have you done in the past? What has it been like when you went through that travel barrier yourself? Do you have a barrier that you're dealing with now? Do you know people who are, or maybe yourself, that you would like to come to Nicaragua, for example, and you feel this apprehension and it seems like there's something emotionally making it difficult to just do it? Let me know. Let's talk about it. I will see you all tomorrow.